Welcome back, everybody! <laughs> to another episode, of course. The game which has no name, but which is uh, going to be amazing. I know it's the worst intro ever. I know, I know. But let's just ignore that intro and let's just jump into the game. The game? The game! Let's jump into the game. So there's been a couple of changes here. Mostly sound changes. But I'm going to show you all the changes. I'm going to talk about also the things that we're going to do in the future also. So first of all, we have mana potions and healing potions. They're very unlikely to drop. As you can see, they are both rare drops. So they will drop very, very rarely. But they're kind of nice. But they're not going to be your main source of healing. So that's why they're not dropping. As you can see also, it replenishes 300 health. But you say, Chris, you have 100,000 health. <laughs> this is just because I've cheated. So that I don't accidentally die when I fight these guys. Because we, yes, we don't have the resting system implemented yet. So, uh, so there's no good source of healing. So, these things. All the items have sound effects. And the sound effects, most of the sound effects now are being played on one audio source. Before I used 3D sounds. Which I still kind of do, but I have an audio source on the player. Before what I did, I still have this system, but I have them both working at the same time. So, whenever something spawns, it either plays a sound on the player, or it plays it somewhere in, in the world. And the benefit of playing it in the world is that it automatically then adjusts the volume of that clip. So that... Uh, it's the correct volume, but it doesn't do that, of course, if I'm playing it on the player as an audio source. But, but that, the reason I'm playing a lot of things on the player and not in the world is that I can only play, I think, like 10 or 15 sounds from different audio sources at the same time. If you use the play or play delayed, if you're using Unity function lingo here, uh, those can only handle like 15 sounds or so. But if you use the uh, play one shot function, instead. Then you can play almost any amount of sounds. I don't know what the limit is, but I've played like 50, 60, 100 or so sounds, and that works with play one shot. So, uh, so that's pretty good. So that's what I've done on the summer. Also, very hard to see here. I don't think anyone is gonna realize this, but I've actually reduced the contrast down just a smidgy smoothie the smooch. Why did you reduce the contrast? Well, this was very unintuitive for me, because I thought Increasing the contrast would be good because then you get more colors, right? More difference between colors. But the problem is with the contrast as it is standard, it's a little bit, it's, it looks a little bit overexposed, in my opinion. There's like too much difference between colors, actually, doesn't look good, is what I realized. So if you just go into the post processing, you can do this on your own project. In most cases, I think just reducing a little bit of contrast, like t minus 10, minus 20, just a little bit of a smidgy smudge, uh, reducing the contrast. This will also brighten the image, but you can adjust that by changing the uh, uh, post uh, exposure. You can drag it down a little bit to adjust for this. Uh, but this makes the image look a much more, much more cleaner, and it's especially visible, I would say, in the skin tones of the character. It looks more natural and it doesn't look as, as I said before, it doesn't look as overexposed as it did before. Uh, so that's one thing. I've added sounds for everything. So these things, of course, now have sounds. We have a drop menu. I, I think I had this last time. I didn't show it last time. If I right click on something, I can drop. On regular items, you can just drop them. That's the only thing you can do. On things such as mana potions or healing potions, you can actually right click them and you can consume. There's going to be a different like a slot here, where there's going to be a separate button, like, I don't know, P for healing potion, or maybe H for healing, I don't know, something. <laughs> Some uh, shortcut for these things, so you don't have to go into your inventory and drink them from there, because, because that's going to be a little bit annoying, I think. But they are very rare, You're, this is not going to be your main source of healing. The main source of healing is going to be the resting system that I talked about last time. But since that's not implemented, I thought to show off how these work. So, of course, I have 100,000 health, and I'm not going to have 100,000 health when the game is in a somewhat finished state. I think I'm going to work, uh, someone asked last time, how I'm going to release this. First of all, I'm working towards a simple demo, which is going to be like 5% of the game or something. So I'm trying to make all the systems, create all the systems that's, that are going to be in the game, so that I can later on just add content, add content, add content. Now I'm just creating all the systems still. 
maybe that's going to be another year or two years. I don't know how long it's going to take to create all the systems. But then after that, when it's done, then I will have a simple demo of the game. And from that, people are going to be able to maybe judge if they want to join the early access version or something. That's what I'm thinking right now. That might change, but that's my idea right now. So anywho, uh, these potions here, of course, they have sound, I think. There's nice and like, pretty noise on there. Yeah, I'm quite proud of this. These healing potion sounds. And then we can also consume, of course. If you consume a mana potion, you give mana, as you can see, and also give a little bit of orange, because mana in this game is orange. It's not blue. I know it's supposed to be blue when it's mana. Might change it in the future if it's confusing to people. But if it's not, I think it looks cool. I think it looks cool. We can also consume the healing potion. It gives a little bit of... A little bit of some red healing coming out there. So, what else is there? Well, there's a lot of things to do with sound. So if you open the door here, we're going to hear the skeletons say something. It's random what they say, but whenever this, uh, an enemy finds you, they're going to say a voice line. And this has two reasons. First of all, it's a little bit cool that they say something. And also, I think it's good because then the player knows, because it might not be obvious that there are enemies in this room, you might not see the enemy, for instance, he might be up here or something where you can't see him. So then you know that they know that you're there, <laughs> essentially. That's, that's the reason. Okay, so if we open the door now, you said someone say, who are you? They can say, they have like 10 or 15 different voice lines that they can say when they find you. And if we close the door now, I think this is a little bit fun, and if we walk away, okay. Then this guy says, come back. I mean, I might remove these sounds, but they might be a little bit cheesy. I don't know. I don't know. But they can say, like, no escape or come back. There's, like, a lot of different voice lines they have for when you try to walk away from them and they open a door, they say that one line. I thought it was a little bit cool. So, next thing is gonna be the effect when you kill one of these guys. So if we get him down to almost zero, when we kill this guy, there's a couple of things gonna happen. His bones are... Oh, well, I might just show you first. Did you catch all those things? I'm gonna break it down for you. All the things that are involved in making that thing happen. This is actually a lot of things. Did you find some... Oh, find some... Hardened chain. Cool. Pick this up. Also, there's sounds when they walk now. Weren't there any sounds for that before? There's no sounds for the door yet. I will have to find somewhere recording... I tried recording my door, but the thing is, the doors in this, since it's a new house, the doors don't make any sound at all. <laughs> it's like completely quiet unless you slam the door or something. I guess I could maybe do, but uh, I think I will need to find somewhere where there's an old, old squeaky door. I think actually, not too far from here, there's actually a temple which has a wooden door, so I'm thinking I could sneak up there and grab some samples, some sound samples maybe. So. Uh, here we have some orange chain, which we could equip. You could see it on the character, uh, but I've already shown the, you all the... No, I haven't shown you all the equipment, how they look. I think I haven't. Oh, the orange chain. Got darn. <laughs> Got darn. Uh, but I thought maybe I'd break down the effect of how... Because now it's much more satisfying, I feel like, when you kill something. Like, the ghost comes out and it, it screams a little bit. And the bones, whenever they hit the ground, they make a little bit of a rattling sounds. It's much more satisfying, I feel like, combat. Even though combat is not balanced, I'm not using any abilities. I'm ju essentially just clicking on guys, which don't deal any considerable damage to me. But still, it feels like there's a little bit of game juice. A little bit like the game feel is starting to get there, I feel like. I'm gonna break down that effect. I think that the things that I'm gonna work on... Uh, is, I think the effects when you hit these guys, they're kind of good now. I feel like you're getting the response that it's kind of satisfying when they pop the skeleton, when the bones shatter, they make sounds, uh, it kind of explodes, and then there's an effect also on the very difficult to see, but if you focus on this guy when I hit him now, there's going to be like a ripple, it's like a post-processing ripple effect. If I remember this, I'm gonna link down below to a website where they share this. I haven't created this script, but there's someone who has created this script. Because I think it's very cool to add uh, for situations like this. Like when something explodes on the screen, it kind of creates ripples on the screen. So, enough talking, let's show it. 
Did he cash it? It was like, a... I think it looks cool. So let's break down the effects here. The effects, the effects. Oh, oh by the way, the... I was talking about the thing and I just stopped talking about it. The things that I, I think that the effects when they hit the enemies look good now and they feel good. Like it feels good when it hits something, there's like good sound effect, there's some bones shattering. I think there's not that much we can improve there. Maybe, maybe, maybe you know, a little bit better sound effects, a little bit more pop to the sound effects. Maybe something with the bones, like when you hit them, maybe the bones could rattle a little bit on them or make something. Something like that, but it's pretty good. I think though that when the enemies hit you, just you don't see your death effect too often, except when you lose the game, so I don't want to make a splashy, splooshy death effect, because you're almost never gonna see it. But instead what I thought I'd do is, when they hit the character, it needs to be a little bit more satisfying. Like, there's some blood just shooting out for like half a second, not even half a second, like 0 0.1 seconds of it, it shows a little bit of blood uh, going out there, but the blood doesn't go anywhere. I'm thinking if the blood shoots out and it hits the ground and it creates some kind of lasting effect on the ground, some blood from the character, that would be cooler. So first, I tried to implement this by using decals and unfortunately in the standard pipeline uh, Yun doesn't support decals. So my idea was why don't I just take a transparent mesh and just put it on top of the floor and have some blood on that thing. And I created that and that didn't work at all. The reason is that transparent meshes don't support receiving shadows. Why? I have no idea. I have no idea why they don't support that. But that makes it so that it's super awkward because then whenever there's a shadow over the, uh, over the mesh or over the blood effect or something, it, the blood stands out as being much lighter than everything else because it doesn't receive shadows. So, uh, so I need to figure out some way of making it happen. I think I have a good plan for this, but that's probably going to be the next or episode after that when I talk about my solution for that. This episode, though, let's talk about how I created this effect of the, this little thing that comes out there. Uh, the ghost that comes out of the skeleton and everything. So, there's a couple of parts here. First of all, there is a... Let's see if we can find it. Chris, where, where did you put it? Uh, I don't exactly remember where I put it. I put it... Did I put it under something illogical? Yeah, like markers. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Okay. Doesn't make any sense, that's why <laughs> that's why I know I did it like I did. Okay. So here's the ghost model, as you can see. It's very similar to the player model, but it's a little bit of a different face on it, so. And a little bit of a different physique on it. Just so it looks a little bit different. A little bit different from the player. And then this guy, of course, has a Yes, but he also has particles! shooting out of him. So this is just a standard particle effect using some noise and kind of a cool thing that I realized with this thing to make it look a little bit like things are pooling a little bit in the mouth when, and then shoot out like this is what I did to achieve that effect is under first of all I created some noise because noise is noise but it's horrible Okay, so I created a noise that is scrolling a little bit, and then what I did is that I did velocity over lifetime radial minus 1.64. I mean, you're gonna have to tweak this for your, for your particle system, but what happens then is that essentially there's a force kind of slowing these particles down. So if they don't have uh, too much uh, velocity in another direction, they're just gonna pull up, which means that a lot of them is gonna get stuck in his mouth, like you see. Unfortunately, sometimes this happens where they get stuck for a really long time. I want something more like this, like something more like spiraling close to him. Like, because he's like vomiting out these spirit particles or whatever. Uh, so that's how that is done. And all I do with this thing then is that I take this guy, I animate him, and I move him up a little bit as he explodes out of him. So it's very simple to create that part of the effect. Then what I do, of course, is that when the skeleton explodes on all the parts of the skeleton, 
there is a mesh collider and the mesh collider has an on mesh enter which registers a hit whenever it hits the floor and that then sends a signal to play a sound but since we're playing as again since we're playing so many sounds we can't just play the sound at that position we need to play the sound uh, i'm using the player as an audio source for all these sounds and i'm using play one shot to play all these sounds uh, so that's another part but then there's actually a third part and that's the, uh, <laughs> the rippling effect and that's uh, a post-processing effect on the camera if you're doing this yourself I might save you one or two hours because it took a long time for me to figure this out. This didn't work for me initially, this script, and that's because I had my post-processing layer sent to directly to camera, which is going to have better performance, but it's not going to allow you to use graphics, don't blit or on-render image, uh, more exactly. It's not going to allow you to do that because it's not going to. It's going to send directly to camera, and then there's not going to be anything. Uh, Anything that you add on top of that is not going to be visible as well. So, so that's about it, I think. Man, 16 minutes? I, I hardly did uh, talk about anything, and it's already 16 minutes. That's amazing. <laughs> I can talk a lot, I guess. The next time, the plan is to make this blood splatter effects. And that's probably going to be the last thing that I think I need for the game feel. I mean, I need, need some ambient sound and at some point some music but it's gonna take a long time for me i've actually downloaded a program called what was called cakewalk which is supposed to make you able to make music if you're if you i mean it's gonna take a long time for me to figure out how to make music but at some point i'm gonna add music also to the game that's gonna be later so first of all we're focusing on adding the blood splatter to the character and then after that i think i'll polish up the uh, almost non-existing combat system to make it to make it work because now it feels good to hit stuffs but we need to also make it the brain part of it now it feels like intuitively good like when you hit there's a good effect there's some splattering there's some bones flying everywhere there's some ghosts coming out like that part is solid like the game feel the juice is there we're almost there till the blood effect but except for that it's kind of there so I think what we need to work on after that is just making combat be interesting because it's super uninteresting. Now we just click, 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 click. Okay, that thing, that click, 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 click. There needs to be decisions for every turn. There's like, why do you even have a turn-based game if there's no decisions? We need to add decisions like maybe some enemies have charge attacks which you need to move away from. Things like that. We're gonna have to try and try and find a way of making the combat interesting in a mechanical way. In a mechanical. That's the word I'm searching. Thank you once so much for watching, and see you soon. Hello, Daniel! And you are? It's -a me, the YouTube algorithm. And well, what are you doing here? I'm just here to take all the views. No, the. Those are my views! Oh, I can explain to you, Senor. You see, you have subs at uh, 0%. And non subs, a hundred percent. That's why he can take all your views. <laughs> I guess it's time that you uh, check out a little the thing down there.